Hey folks, welcome back. It's time for our walkthrough, our weekly walkthrough for unit two. So let me share my screen with you. And we're gonna take a look at what is going on in unit number two in English 110. So most of the writing that you do in college is going to have research involved. Your first paper, of course, for our class was a personal narrative. So you got to uh, do all your research by searching your own brain, which is of course a nice, a nice thing, but we are gonna be using sources for um, the rest of the, the writings that we'll do in this class, but you'll also be doing research for pretty much every other class that you'll ever, ever take in college. Um, so that's where we're getting, uh, getting heading this week. So building an essay and finding reliable sources. Uh, essays, of course, you guys wrote one for last week. Uh, always think of an essay as having multiple paragraphs. It doesn't always have exactly five paragraphs, even though uh, the five paragraph essay is certainly a tried and true method, um, especially if you're writing something for an essay exam. If you've got an intro, three body paragraphs and a conclusion, uh, you're usually going to be in the ballpark. When you have longer papers to write, however, you sometimes want to think of those three paragraphs in the middle, not as necessarily being paragraphs, but as being whole sections of your paper. So you may have a particularly complicated point that takes three or four paragraphs to talk about. Um, and you have three points times three, et cetera, et cetera. Most of the assignments you'll do in our class are fairly short, but um, be thinking about that. It's still the same mentality, introduction, body, conclusion, when you're writing longer papers or when you're including research, but it's that same kind of feeling. Um, here's, my, here's my introduction with my thesis and my main point stated. Here's the stuff that you need to know in the body. And then here's me kind of bringing it all back around in the conclusion. So the objectives for this particular unit are um, going to focus on finding resources using the library. And I cannot stress to you how important this is. These days, we use internet for almost everything. In fact, we even use the internet to access the resources that are in the library. Um, most of our research these days can be done from our home in our pajamas uh, or wherever we may find ourselves as long as we have an internet connection. But when you are looking at the internet versus looking at a published resource, whether it's a book, um, whether that book is in print or whether it's in electronic form, if it is published information from a magazine or a newspaper or especially from an academic journal, we consider those sources to be more reliable than something that somebody just pays to put up on the internet. Now, that doesn't mean that the internet has only bad information and that library resources have only good information. So a big part of this unit is getting familiar with how to use the search tools that the library has. Most of us already know how to Google things. Uh, so we're going to get used to searching from the library. And then we're also going to be thinking about, well, what is it that makes a source reliable versus unreliable? Just because something contains someone's opinion does not necessarily make it unreliable. For example, if that person is in fact an expert on the subject and they have conducted their research and they are supplying you with reliable information, um, then their opinion might actually be relevant. Um, it's not all about facts, uh, but we also have to be careful about people's opinions because maybe they're not looking at good research as they're forming their opinions. So we're gonna be working on that. Um, and part of that then also is how we use quotes um, and how we cite those sources when we are quoting a source. Um, it's important that we give credit where credit is due. But the other nice thing about using proper citation is that if that information later turns out to be wrong, but we have cited our source, we are kind of also protecting ourselves 
in, in case that information later becomes uh, irrelevant or outdated or whatever the case may be. So we're gonna read, view and engage the resources, which we'll look at in just a second. You do have a discussion board this week and we do have another formal writing assignment. So you are gonna to wanna to use the APA template that you've gotten back from unit one and you're gonna upload that assignment. Now, the good news is this is only a single paragraph. However, uh, so it'll be shorter than your essay was for unit number one, but it will still have a cover page. It will still have the, the paragraph itself will be on page two in the document. And then it will have a references page because you're going to cite the source that you use to support that paragraph. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the readings and resources. I am certainly not going to read them to you, uh, but just as a reminder, this link is always expands quite a bit. So you wanna make sure that you go through everything. In unit one, that's where you found that APA template was once you expanded the readings and resources. You've got links, of course, to the textbook and you have writing, reading assignments in our textbook. Um, and then you have some information on how to quote things directly. Um, direct quoting, of course, is where you take the actual words from the source. You show that it's a quote by putting quotation marks around it. But then we also have to have what we call an in-text or a parenthetical citation that shows which of the sources on our references list that refers to. Um, inside those parentheses will typically be an author's name and a year in APA. Um, in MLA, they like page numbers. In APA, they like currency. So they like to keep track of the year that it was published. If there is no year, number one, you might want to ask yourself why you're using it, because that's a little bit tricky, especially if it's a scientific topic or something that, you know, it, having good current information is important for. Um, if you do not have a date, you still put in period, D period for, for showing that there's no date. So no matter what, you'll always have the little parenthetical in-text citation whenever you quote from a source. You're also going to use those in-text citations when we paraphrase things or summarize them and put them in our own words, but we'll get to that a little bit later down the road. So this week, your focus is gonna be on finding a resource and writing a paragraph using that resource for your support. So it's got, uh, there's a link here called site that the activity is citing evidence. You wanna do that. Um, you wanna go through all of the information here. And then there's a short video under five minutes on how to access post library resources. Um, I have some videos that I've made as well. And I may post some of those a little bit later in the week, but those are your readings and resources. And then of course, once you've done that, you will have your unit two discussion board. So let's talk about that first. In the discussion board, you're going to review the video, how to get to and navigate the library page. Um, you're gonna review the readings and resources, of course. Uh, do not use Google to find a source for this particular discussion because you should only be getting a source through the library. Um, if you get stumped on which topic to use, you can certainly use the Points of View Reference Center. There's a link there. There's some great resources for that. And then your paragraph is going to only be, well, in your discussion board, you're going to have actually two paragraphs. The first paragraph put the title, author, publisher, and year of publication, and explain why this article is an example of a reliable academic source. And then you uh, should use the uh, two sections of the about writing, which are the is this source scholarly and how to evaluate web sources uh, to help you write about the, the article. In the second paragraph, write about what interested you. Why is this particular source the one that you chose? As usual, your own post should be up by Wednesday night at the end of the day. And then you have the rest of the week until next Sunday to respond to at least two classmates. And of course, I will remind you that it's a good idea to review the rubric both before you post your response and after you get your grades back. You'll be getting your grades back on the first unit discussion um, 
Monday to Tuesday, Wednesday at the latest, along with your grades on your first essay. But this will give you that rubric to take a look at. So you can check that out. Um, oh, shoot. I did not mean to close that out. Sorry. Then you go back in. I got click happy, which happens from time to time. All right. And then your big assignment, even though it's technically a little bit smaller than your, uh, than your discussion, uh, is your supported paragraph submission. So in this assignment, you're only going to write one paragraph, but you're going to put it in that formal format. So you're going to have a cover page, title page, you're going to have the, the paragraph with citations and the references page. So let's check out that assignment sheet. You have an article that you're going to base this on, and this is based on a face mask thing. Um, of course, it's current, uh, uh, and it's one less thing for you to have to research. Uh, you do not have to use face mask research in your discussion. You can research anything that you want for that. Um, but here is an article called Debate on Face Mask Divides Air Travel Industry, written by A. Gan Gangiat Gangitano. I can't talk today. Um, and this has already got the citation for you. So on the references page, you're going to basically copy and paste this. Uh, you do not have to reinvent the wheel. You can take this control C or command C if you're on a Mac like I am, and then just paste it directly into your references list. Now on the references list, it will not need the little bullet. Okay. So you want to follow APA format, but you have the content that you need there. So you're going to write your own position, whether or not passengers should be required to wear a face mask on a plane. No matter what the author of the article says, if you believe the opposite, you are welcome to use the opposite position, okay? But you do need to have at least one quotation from Gangitano's article that is cited. And you'll notice it has an author, Gangitano, and it has a year, 2020. So that's what's going to go in your little parentheses that goes with the quotation. Okay. So you're going to have, um, there's some instructions here to help you. Uh, with what you do. First, begin your paragraph with a clear topic sentence that states where you stand. So if I did not believe that people should be required to wear masks on airplanes, that could be my, my topic sentence. People should not be required to wear masks on airplanes. Then I would launch into my rest of my discussion, but that would be my topic sentence. You want to have seven to nine sentences uh, you should have, and it says one direct quote from the author, from the article. Do not use first person. Um, you've got to use first person in your personal narrative. But now when we're writing for academic purposes, we never need to say, I think, I see, I feel, I believe, because we are going to make a point and then we're going to prove it with evidence. So it, avoid words like I and me and that sort of thing. You also want to avoid you and your. Um, when we write in second person, which of course is what that is, it sounds like we're kind of being preachy. You shouldn't ever think about putting on a face, whatever the case may be. So avoid first and second person. You want to write in that objective tone of voice, third person. Here's the facts. Here's what I'm, here's what I'm talking about. And then in the center, somewhere in the middle of your paragraph, include a direct quote from the reading. And notice it even shows you what goes inside the parenthetical citation. Um, it does ask you to include a um, page number there, but it is a website. So I don't know why that's there. It really should just be Gangitano 2020 inside the parentheses, unless you're using paragraph numbers. Um, and then we would say PAR period for that. Um, and then finally, comment on and explain the quotation. So you may either agree with Gangitano or disagree with Gangitano, but either way, you, you still want to have a quote from that particular article in your paragraph. As usual, this is going to be a Microsoft Word document. You can save it as a PDF instead. That's fine, but you do want it in APA format. 
I would really urge you if you did not already save it, go back to unit one and pull that that um, APA template. It's gonna help you a great deal. Um, so you'll have a title page, you'll have the middle, which probably the paragraph, even if it's seven to nine sentences is still only gonna be one page, double spaced. And then you'll have the um, references page, which will only have one item on it. Again, it reminds you here that the quote should be somewhere in the middle uh, of the paragraph. Use objective third person language, at least seven sentences. I would not go more than nine um, as it said above. And then of course it's got again for you the reference uh, that you'll need for the references page. Okay. Then of course, as usual, you've got the rubric. So check that out. Um, it's going to remind you if you're taking a look at that before you turn it in. Oh my gosh, I need to have a topic sentence. Oh my gosh, I need to be an objective voice. That rubric will help you remind you of how it's being graded. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, as usual, my office hours will be on Thursday morning and on Sunday evening, uh, but I'm pretty much available anytime via text message or uh, in by our email, or you can always post a question on the Q and a discussion board. We've had a couple of those so far this week, which is great. I love when people use that, um, because it, it lets me answer the question once instead of 22 different times. So that's always a nice thing to, to use. It helps your fellow students out as well, but do not hesitate to reach out if you have questions or problems. And I'm looking forward to reading those narratives. Um, some of you have already even gotten those back, um, but grades will be out for unit one Monday through Wednesday, Wednesday at the latest. So keep an eye out for those. Oh, and one final reminder, when you do get grades back, make sure you not only look at the number, but look at the actual feedback. So there's always going to be some feedback uh, directly from me, as well as, of course, the rubric. So if you've got questions about those too, let me know. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again next week. Everybody take care.